So I know there's some confusion with uh, produce and consume a little bit. So I wanted to walk through a produce and consume setup, but instead of with a, just a dent, I'm going to do these with user-defined data types. Um, dents are popular, either the, the 32-bit setups, but um, what you don't know is, is what about user-defined data types? Those can be transmitted by a produce and consume in the Allen Bradley um, architecture. And so I, I'm run, if you take a look here, I'm running RS Logix 5000 revision 20, so it's an older processor. This processor is back in my lab, way back in the back. Um, and it is, and I just have this set up to be um, a, a producer. That way I can just trigger it with a memory bit. And what you'll see is I just got a get system value. And if you see, you see I got two user defined data types. One is just kind of a time setup. So that you know, year, month, hour, based upon the Git system value, uh, um, uh, like architecture, uh, they're all dense, kind of is a modified array, but they're all clearly labeled. Okay. But what I also do is something really cheeky because you can't share a single bool. However, I can create a user-defined data type with one bool in it, and I can share that. And so that's what I did. So basically, maybe I, I want to take uh, have a. I'm sending information that there's a fault somewhere. So I got this get system value here that, that when this trigger goes true uh, at the exact moment, it's going to basically fill in this value to kind of log the time. And then it's going to have a dent that turns on to send, uh, not dent, but this uh, bool to turn on to send over to another process saying, hey, this process is faulted. You know, very rudimentary. Um, but the thing with the user find data types is you got to have them match your pro on both processes in order to share them. So I've already shared the time, but let me show you how I export a user-defined data type if you don't know. So I right-click on it, hit export data type, and it's going to then basically export an L5X file, which is uh, the same file that you would do with routine or maybe an add-on instruction as well. And let me make sure, because I have a bunch of windows open, should export, just takes a second. Come on, you can do it. Oh, I hope this thing didn't crash on me while I'm doing this. That would be fun. Well, here's my revision 30. So if you look up here, you can see revision 30, logic designer versus RS logics. So, oh, here it goes. So it's open. I'm going to export it, and it's going to create that for me. Um, I'm going to go over to my logic designer or studio 5000 as you might hear it called and what I'm going to do is under user defined data types here I'm going to right click and do import data type and so now hey look there's my active data type I'm going to hit OK and it's going to import in so I hit OK performing the input everything is hunky-dory okay so again if you don't remember I'm gonna go back to my RS logics controller tags right now this is active you know on the time fault if I hit edit properties notice that it's, it's already set up to be produced connection one meaning I can communicate with that with one but I have not set this up yet it's still a base tag, so for me, I need to do it produced, connection, one. Hit apply, hit OK, and download. Set up your produce first, get it active and download before you set up your consume. I know a lot of students, when they do it, they try to do both at once. No, just do your producer first, then do your consumer. So I'm back to run mode. If I go back to my main routine, if I hit trigger, if I trigger this, you can see that, and let me go into view and watch. And you can see the year there, but let me go into controller. And you can see all the time that I have is set up in stone. It's not moving because it's the one of the one shot. And if I go back to my main routine, trigger, you should see that that's now different. So more or less different okay so now that's working properly and you can see the the um the faulted bit the yes bit is on i'm going to 
just kind of, I'm going to keep this active, but I'm going to kind of minimize it for the time being. Because here is my main, here's my routine. I am not going to put anything in here because I'm not going to do any programming. I just want to show, produce, and consume. First thing you need to do is set up your, in your IO tree, your other processor. So how does it connect to the, well, I keep asking, how does it connect to the, the main processor? Well, in this case, it's connected via Ethernet. So under Ethernet, I do new module. I just so happen to know that this is a, uh, an Ethernet card that I have to look for first because I can't go right to the processor because on this style, it's an L843, that there's an Ethernet card that's communicating with the outside world, which is 1768, EBNT. Again, you can get this information from RS links. Hit create. You gotta make sure your revision match. I know I'm running revision three, so I hit okay. And then now I'll give it a name, P1, and make sure you put the IP address in, 95162. Paddle keying. The other thing you need to make sure is make sure this is in slot one because the processor is always in slot zero, okay? So now that's created, now I have to add my processor. And you can see it's right here, it's revision 20. And now this is my connection name, Produ prod one. I'm just call it prod one because it's my producer one. Slot zero, you know, disable key, hit okay. And so now I've included, now my processors are, I've set up my communications, everything's hunky-dory. We're Now we can go into our controller tags. Remember, produce consume is always on controller side. And you can see I've already created a time log so I could right click and edit the properties and this is where I change it to a consumed setup connection what's that called and now I need to clearly and look it's going to be the time type um, clearly label what that is so I'm going to go check my other my other program and that one's called fault so I need to put in the name directly okay and notice it's already defaulted to the right data type because that's the data type you put here. I hit apply, hit okay. And then I'm gonna do the, that, that other bit too. So I'm gonna call it, you know, I'm gonna just call it the same thing, faulted. Right, cl uh, right click. Properties, and yes, you can also right click on here. I'm just, this is my creature of habitness. Consumed. I'm gonna call this active. Connection, again, producer. And I think this is called faulted. So active, faulted, hit apply. That's okay, hit okay. And now I have the base tag is prod fault, prod faulted, and that's, an and then my two data types. So now I'm gonna find my processor, which is the one right behind me. Let me set project path because I wanna just do something real fast because this is not set up right and it's gonna give me an error. Just give me one second. Yeah, because I want to demonstrate this properly. And so now I download. Let me download, I'm in program mode. Switch. Okay. So let me go to run mode. And so now if I look, monitor tags, edit. Hey look, I got information from my other processor. 
and look, it went directly. And I just shared a bool by using user defined data types. So I'm gonna go side by side just so you can see this as I trigger things. So this here is my 30. This here is my 20 processor. And if I toggle this bit, watch what happens next. It just changed. And look, this turned off and I turned on and off. So if I toggle that bit, now it's off. So I've cleared my fault. And now here's my, my log. Yes, you can now stack all these in like an array and some other stuff. I'm not gonna get, I don't wanna go too much into that because the pur purpose of this is produce and consume with user defined data types. That's what I was trying to show. Um, and so now if I hit trigger, you can see it's cat cataloging the name. And if, if I want to just really demonstrate it, I'm going to go into date and time and change the date and time to, um, let's, you know, let's change it to, let's change date and time to, I don't know. And let's just change it to AM. All right, so there we go. There's the date and time. Just to show you this isn't a fluke. So now if I trigger, take a look, 2000, 2018, October, and three o'clock in the morning. So this is how you do produce and consume, and this is how you use your user find data types through produce and consume. Again, set up your producer side first, make sure every, all your tags are in the controller tag, and then set up your consumer side, making sure that you add your IO, um, your processor and any ethernet cards you need in your IO tree structure. On the produce side, I don't need to add the IO because all the producers is just sending out information, sending out information. You do need to use this, do that on the messaging, uh, not the messaging, on the, on the consumer side. So, because that's where you're listening and forgetting information and doing reading. Okay. I hope this was helpful. Have a good day.